This is the crystal mandala that we worked with yesterday evening during the April full moon meditation, which coincided with the lunar eclipse. The focus of the meditation was to release all negative karma, any karmic residue that doesn't serve us, to transmute negativity in all shapes and forms from all dimensions and timelines. Cancel contracts which may have been installed in previous lifetimes. And to release and let go of all negative thought forms, self destructive programming, conditioning, concepts which may have been installed during this current lifetime. This mandala resonates primarily with the soul star chakra, which is the chakra approximately six inches above the head, top of the head. And this chakra is the main chakra to work with, with issues relating to karma. For this chakra, we've used the clear quartz selenite and all of the white crystals. And the Polarity of this soul star chakra is the earth star chakra, which is equidistant from the soles of our feet. So it's six inches approximately below the soles of our feet. And we've worked with this chakra not just to create harmony and balance in working with the polarities, but also to use it as a vehicle to transmute everything that we're looking to let go so that the earth can transmute it back into love. The crystals that you see here that are dark, so there's a lot of hematite, there's obsidian, there's guthite. These all resonate with the earth star chakra. So I'll take you on a little tour of some of the features in this mandala so that you can perhaps better understand what's gone into it. At the centre you can see there's a blue bowl, a blue square bowl. This is the feminine receptacle. The bowl is square which is representing the earth, the, the uh, geometry representing the earth element. And we're using this, as I mentioned earlier, to transmute the negativity. Um, symbolically, we've used water in the bowl so that that which we're looking to wash away and release is stored in the water and we can then release the water into the earth after the ceremony has taken place. Inside the bowl, at the centre, we have a opalized ammonite, which you can't really see the fire in it. It's a, a very fiery ammonite. The ammonite obviously being symbolic for creation, point zero in this case, um, at the centre of this mandala. Radiating in circles around the ammonite, we've placed hematite, clear quartz, rose quartz and peridot. We've used rose quartz for love hematite for grounding and transmutation and protection, detoxification, clear quartz for raising the vibration and also for conductivity in a sense. And we've used peridot, which is also known as olivine, to increase the essential life force. At the top of the ammonite there is a terminalated clear quartz, which is clear quartz with tourmaline strands in it. This is representing harmony, light, dark, yin, yang, and is to facilitate balance at this core of the mandala. There's a little clear quartz cluster just on top of that to amplify it. So radiating outwards in the flower of life geometry are six clear quartz points uh, there are Lemurians and there's phantoms in there also. Phantom quartz um, are used for 
Raise, to raise old issues and old programmings and basically any of the old skeletons that are in our closets. The geometry of the flower of life is actually aligned this way because this is the north facing corner of the room, just in case you're wondering. So water element and earth element represented here with the water and the square bowl. And blue is also representative of the air. Uh, the crystals inside the bowl represent spirit and also earth. On the outside of the bowl, the four corners have uh, rose quartz spheres, which are star rose quartz, which radiate love in all directions. Between them, they have hematite quartz, which is a hematite included quartz, Baden quartz, Herkimer diamonds form a circle around the entire core. We have um, double terminated quartz crystals just running the energy in the circle in concentric patterns around it. We also have uh, fluorites here inside of each of these Faden quartzes. The Fadens are used to communicate with higher self, spirit guides, source communication on all levels really. And the fluorite octahedrons that we've used uh, carry through the balanced theme of masculine feminine. So we have the downward facing uh, triangle on this octahedron facing downwards representing sac sacred feminine. And we have the upward facing on the masculine side which is representing the sacred masculine. And that pattern is repeated on all four sides of the mandala. Next to the star rose quartz here, we have selenite, which is just reinforcing the pillars. And uh, according to North American tradition, we have used the turquoise to grid all of the four corners, the directions. And next to that, we use fulgurite, which is used in the shamanic tradition. Um, they believe that when you say prayer or make intentions, if you blow it through the hole in, in, in the fulgurite, that it'll arrive and be communicated faster by those that need to hear it. We have sunstone. We've got two sunstone, as you can see. And on the top we have two black moonstone, which are representing obviously the moon and also the lunar eclipse. And we have obsidian arrowheads, which are protecting the inner sanctuary in the core of this mandala. Surrounding this, we have the black hematite circle, which again is to offer protection for the core of the mandala, but also to ground and manifest the intentions of the people working with it and also to ground the energies within the mandala itself. We have at four corners this little black crystal, which is in fact a chiastolite, and seeing as it's the Easter weekend, we wanted to work with Christ consciousness. So we have gridded in a cross, we've gridded with four chiastolite crystals. And then encircling the hematite is the clear quartz points, which are all radiating outwards, which is the direction that the terminations need to be pointing in if you're doing group work. If you're doing individual work, then they would be pointing inwards towards the centre. So the use of circle, um, the circular form, the sphere in this case, is representing the circle of life the wheel of time, the wheel of the year, passage of time. And we have in this mandala four circles in total. We've got the Herkimer diamonds encircling the core. We've got the hematite as the second concentric circle. We've got the clear quartz as the third concentric circle. And then the outward circle of the mandala is also created from hematite.
that each of the, um, the candles out here we've used also some fluorite and the fluorite is to stabilize the energy within the grid itself in this situation. Um, most of the fluorite are octahedrons or cubes. Uh, the four corners of the room and the four corners of the grid are actually gridded to the directions with the elements also. So at the north, you can see here is the earth element. This is the air element. This is the fire element. And this is the water element to the west. We've got four clear quartz points around these element mani stones, these direction mani stones. And on the feminine side, we have got a black moonstone, which again represents the sacred feminine, Luna, the moon, and the lunar eclipse. And for balance, on the opposite side, on the masculine side, we've got sunstone. So with this meditation, we connected via some guthite and via selenite with a, uh, a larger piece of selenite just inside our door here. And this itself was connected with another mandala, which is out in the garden. So we've got the outside mandala connecting with this mandala indoors via the guthite and the selenite working as a generator and then transferring energy via another piece of guthite and selenite up through the cosmic harmony twin crystal, which is the Lemurian crystal I mentioned earlier. We have here the four directions represented with salt, Himalaya salt lamps, which is to feed the spirits in the four directions. In front of them, we have four pieces of selenite. And here, right in front of the Cosmic Harmony, we have a little Mani Stone, which is uh, the spirit totem of Mole. And we were guided to work with this spirit animal for this reason. The Mole goes through the ground with no vision and just has to go through life feeling and working from feelings and sensations and so we felt that it would be appropriate to work with him on this occasion as we need to trust in the process and trust that everything that's happening is happening for a reason and trust that it's for a higher good so it made an awful lot of sense to include Mr Mole in the mandala. So as we mentioned earlier, the centre of this bowl includes an opalized ammonite and continuing the ammonite theme, we've placed a large piece of ammonite right behind the cosmic harmony crystal. And up on the light altar, we have on the masculine side here, um, an elestiolated smoky quartz crystal. And on the feminine side, we have an Isis Nicest face on this quartz crystal. We also have on this feminine side a rainbow moonstone and on the masculine side a sunstone. We've used the pine cone as a representation of the pineal gland and we have on the other side used a lotus pod as the representation of enlightenment. In working with um, clear quartz light crystals and also dark crystals. We're working with both polarities of light and dark, yin and yang, masculine and feminine, soul star and earth star. And we've tried to ensure that there is a repetition of, of this harmony and that this balance is introduced at all levels on the mandala. So that is it.